Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Here's my worship, here's my worship, take joy in it, make it your dwelling place, I want to put a smile on your face, I present my heart to you, heart to you. I present my heart Here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord. Is my worship smile? Is my life, Lord, smile? Is my worship? Is my worship smile? Is my life, Lord? Is my
wanna make you smile. I wanna make you smile. I wanna make you smile. So here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. Got our face and my heart to you. Oh, I breathe in my life to you. Everybody say, here's my Here's my worship. Come on, take joy in it. Take joy in it. I want to make you smile, God. Make it your dwelling place. In your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I want to put a smile on your face. I breathe in my heart to you. God, I breathe in my heart to you. I present my heart. I present my heart to you. Everybody in here, I need y'all to say that with me. I present my heart. you mean it, like to you. Heart to you. I present my heart. I present my Here's my heart, Lord. Heart to you. Here's my life, Lord. I present my Come on and worship the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, for Ocean City, let us sign up and pay today. Amen. How many wants to go? Okay, well, let's pay today because if not, it will be canceled. It's an annual event once a year. So we can postpone it. Our school resume in September, late August. So please, let's sign up today. Let's pay today, please. So we can do that. Amen? Uh, the money is for the boss, not for baptism. Amen? Amen? It's for the boss, not for baptism. We don't charge for that. Freely we receive, freely we give. Amen? And if you have to baptize, how I many of you want to baptize? Have you signed up? Wow, we have few people. You have to sign up with Pastor Reggie. There's a class. There's a class that we have to go through before baptism. And I believe in bringing knowledge and understanding for what you're about to do. We are not just going there to swim. Amen. We are not just going there to do that. This is a spiritual thing. Amen. Very spiritual. Do you know that's the point that we identify with Christ? That's the point that we identify with Christ in baptism. And we also identify with his resurrection. Very powerful. Whoa. When you get better understanding of this, you'll see even miracles. They will tell you, I baptize people, they slain underwater. I have to drag them out. That's why I don't do it alone. I have a, a Pastor Reggie was with me last, last year. Yeah, the wave knocked us down many times. We to baptize many times. Then Pastor Reggie left me there by myself. I have to call Sean. Say, hey, come on, Sean. Your dad is gone. You next. Come on. Come help me. But it's very spiritual, honest. It is very spiritual. Even when you baptize, heaven open. That's what happened when you when Jesus baptized. Three things happened. Three things. Jesus executed baptism. He baptized. Father, the Father spoke. This is my beloved Son. In whom I am well pleased. Then Holy Spirit descended like a dove. What we experience in this ministry, when you do it right, 
especially you follow the teaching. We have the teaching that we're going to be teaching. You follow the teaching, you will see heaven open to you. Gift of the Spirit who have been given. We say this. So this is very important. Let us sign up today. Let us pay today so we can go. I wouldn't like to cancel. Amen? I would like to cancel. It's good to go. It's an annual event. It's an annual event. And it's only thirty-seven dollars. Hello? Thirty-seven. And that's why I'm going to teach this message. Seven ways to overcome hardship. Hardship. And to receive divine manifestation. I taught this message Friday. I didn't finish. I'm going to finish today. Yeah, I, I know we are in a tough time. How many agree with that? Yeah, the time's tough. But for us as Christians, our finances, our resources don't come from here. God bless us with the divine resources. God open ways where it seems there's no way. Hallelujah. And I truly believe in the time of hardship in the land. I truly believe that the time that God bless his own people. God always makes statements to let us know your economy, our economy is not the economy of universe. Our economy is the economy of the kingdom of God. And how we can access it is by faith. Hallelujah. It's by faith. I thought this message, I truly believe it will bless you. I couldn't finish Sunday. Holy Ghost, I mean Friday. Holy Spirit interrupted my message. He interrupted my message. People were revived. People were rejoicing. Because this is the truth. Amen. Now, let's go quick to John 16, 3. John 16, 3. And the, the topic is seven ways to overcome hardships and receive divine manifestations of your breakthrough. John 16, 13, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good share. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. If you are in Christ Jesus, you've already overcome the world. Because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Now, how do we overcome hardship? Number one, trust God at all times. Trust God at all times, every time, every day. Trusting God is the most, is a most when we are going through difficult time. It is a must when we are going through difficult time. We can't do without God. Can I hear amen to that? We can't do without him. We are in him. So in the time that we are in, we have to trust God in all times, regardless of what you are going through. Regardless of what's happening in America and all over the world. God is our supplier. God is one that bless us. Our blessing is in God. Our greatness is in God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how difficult things are. It doesn't matter. Our God will take care of you. I say our God will take care of you. My God will take care of you. Hallelujah. It's only in the kingdom of God you see the king taking care of the citizen. It's only in the kingdom of God. Also, it's only in the kingdom of God you see that the king drafted his people in. Nobody vote for God to be in. We are voted and drafted into the kingdom of God. 
in the kingdom of this world, we have to vote for the president. And those presidents, a lot of them now align so we can vote for them. You got to be led by the spirit to vote. Some of them are lying because they want your vote. After they receive your vote, they won't do what they promised they're going to do. But our God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you don't need to vote for him. He's going to vote you in and he's going to take care of you. He has all the resources. Hallelujah. And that's why we got to trust God at all times. Media, can you display the scripture? He said, Know therefore that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keep His covenant and His loving kindness to a thousand generations. How long? How long? A thousand generations. He keep covenant. God don't forget. He will do what He say He will do. He keep his covenant over a thousand generations. That's a long, long time to those who love him. Do you love God? Do you love God? Are you keeping his commandment? God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Nobody can stop him. Satan cannot stop him. Those demons cannot stop him. Principality cannot stop him. Power of darkness cannot stop him. No one can stop our God. That's why we have to trust him all the days of our life. It doesn't matter. Your situation right now. You see, he keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and those who keep his commandment. So we have to trust God at all times. Number two, I'm going to move swiftly because I went over this last week on Friday. Number two, focus. And that's the problem we have. We always focus on our own ability. Focus on God's greatness instead of our problems, instead of our issues. When you focus on God's greatness, you will experience his greatness. When you focus on your problems, your problem will increase. Even the devil will remind you you have more problem than that. But when you focus, hallelujah, on God's greatness. Come on, how many know that our God is great? How many know that our God is awesome? How many know that nothing is too big for him? How many know that our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything that we ask him? Hallelujah. Change your focus. Shift your focus. Focus on God's ability. Focus on God's greatness. Hallelujah. And God will not disappoint you. Amen. First Chronicle 29.11 First Chronicle 29.11 He said, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty for everything that is in heaven and everything that is on earth. Everything belongs to our God. He is the greatness. His power belongs to him. Glory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Your breakthrough belongs to him. Your miracle belongs to him. Your healing belongs to him. Even your house belongs to him. Your new car belongs to him. Everything that you want is in our God. So don't focus on your problems. Amen. Don't worry about your problems. But be concerned about your problem. Concern will lead you to prayer. I didn't hear any amen on that. Don't worry about what? Your problem. The word worry, in the Greek word, it means divided mind. Divided mind. When you're worrying about your problem, that means your mind 
mind is divided. Legitimate things and illegitimate things. Things you should be trying to do and things that you're not supposed to be thinking about. And then, if your mind is divided, you will not be able to do the assignment. Because it takes your whole mind to do things. As the mind thinks, so it is. If your mind is divided, that's why you are weak. But concern is different. Hello? If you are concerned about your problem, it will lead you to pray. It will lead you to fast. It will lead you to praise God and to worship God and to trust God. But when mind is divided, it will weakness your ability. Because our God is good. Amen. I don't focus on my problem. I focus on God. Because my God is bigger than my problem. And my God is able to fix my problem. My God is able to change everything for me. My God is able to overthrow the king because of me. My God is able to overthrow the president for you. You know what the Bible says? It says, if a man's way please the Lord, he will cause his enemy to be at peace with him. Amen. They will be at peace with me and they will come and bless me. But yet they won't know why they're doing that. But I know. Are you hearing me, church? Amen. He said, Lord, He is the greatest, He is the greatness, the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted above everything. Are you hearing me? So let's focus on God's greatness. When you focus on God's greatness, God will give you your divine manifestations. God will give you what he promised he will do. Can I hear amen to that? Number three. Declare the mighty word of God over your situation. Declare the mighty word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is active. The word of God changes situation. The word of God causes you to believe. The word of God causes you to act. Hallelujah. The word of God will bring breakthrough. Declare it. Amen. Last week I gave a scripture. 2 Corinthians 9 8. And God is able. Come on. My God is able to make. Uh, to make. Come on. Say, my God is able to make. All grace abound towards me. My God. My God is able to make all grace. How many grace? How many? One, two, three. In every area that you need grace. In every area that you are weak. In every area that you are unable. God is able to make all grace abound. Why? So you might have all sufficiency. What is all sufficiency? Just enough? Not enough? More than enough. My God is able. It doesn't matter what I have now. What really matters is what is about to do. What really matter what is coming. Because my God is able to make all grace abound towards me and he's going to do it. Do you believe it? So you may have all sufficiency in one thing, in two things, in three things, five things, in everything, every area of your life. 
if you are a giver, when you give, God is able to bring it back. More than you gave. Oh, come on. Come on, church. You need to declare that scripture over your life for God to make all grace abound. Amen. He's able. Come on, say he's able. My God is able. My God is able. Hallelujah. To make it happen. I like the word make. But let me move to it. I like the word make. It means something that is not there. But God will put it together to make it. But you don't deserve it. I mean, what is grace? Uh -huh, you don't deserve it. But because you obey and you love God, it will make it happen. It doesn't matter what situation you are in. It doesn't matter those that are opposite, that are against you. It will move some stuff and replace some stuff and replace some people and shake some things and cut some things and amend some things for you to make it happen for you. Hallelujah. It will overthrow some things. Shake some things. Some things to fall away and some things to fall in. Yay! Yay! You don't have to do it. You will do it. Shake some things. Some things are shaking in the spirit realm. It's shaking for our good. Some things he has to shake away. Some things he has to shake in alignment. Some things you have to get rid of. You just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My God is working. My God is making it happen. My God is doing something. He's not sitting down. He is active. He's doing some stuff that man cannot do. Because grace, 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 I prophesy over your life. Every area that you are shortcoming, let the grace of God begin to manifest. Begin to manifest in your life, in your home, in your business, in your transaction. You need the grace of God. That's what we need to do to declare the mighty word of God over our situation. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is rich. The word of God is active. It can cut things. It can move things. Are you hearing me? Yeah! 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 Speak the word over your situation. Amen. Listen to me. You are not poor. You are not poor. I am rich. I am wealthy. I am not sick. I am healed. By his stripes. I am healed. The Bible says on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. I am on Mount Zion. I'm standing on Mount Zion. I'm standing on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. There shall be miracle. Do you know why? Because the devil is not permitted on Mount Zion. The devil is not permitted on Mount Zion. All you need to do, change your position. Move to Mount Zion. On Mount Zion, sickness is illegal. Sickness is illegal. Disease is illegal. The devil is not invited. Yet they take poor property. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. On Mount Zion, there shall be breakthrough. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am not a conqueror. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unshakable. I am unstoppable. I am more than conqueror. I am unmovable. I am unshakable. The Lord is on my side. I am not alone. He is on my side. He's working for me. He's fighting for me. He's putting together for me. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. I am not poor. I am healthy. 
I am strong. Yeah. I am strong. I am mighty. Because greater, greater, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm making it. I'm moving forward. I am unstoppable. Backward never. Forward ever. Yeah. 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 Declare the word of God. I am more than conqueror. I am blessed. Whom God bless? Who God bless? Who God bless? No my cost. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed to be disappointed. I cannot be disappointed. I am anointed. The Lord is on my side. I am approved. I am a part of compassion. Yay! 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 The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. You are blessed. You are anointed. The Lord is on your side. You are making it because you are Jesus. Somebody shout yeah, 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 yeah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know it's formed, but it will not prosper. It will not prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment, God condemn it. Condemn it, condemn it, condemn it, condemn it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say I am the head, not the tail. Heavenly Father, anoint me with anointing of the head. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, give me spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding to lead, to direct, to instruct. The rule because the Bible said, because the Bible says that we are kings. The Bible says we are kings, we are kings and prince. From today on, I will begin to reign like a king. I will begin to possess my territory in the name of Jesus. The Bible says. That we are priests that have access to the holy of holy. Oh, can I talk to you? Somebody declare the word of God. Somebody declare the word of God over your life. Declare the word of God over your situation. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Mighty word of God over your situation. Don't be quiet. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak the word of God over your children, over your family, over your spouse. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. Declare the mighty work of God over your situation. You will transcend above, above your situation. You will overcome your situation. You will experience super natural power. What God will do, Holy Spirit will collaborate with you. What He will do, He will put His super on your natural. Yeah! His super on your natural. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I gotta move forward. Can I move forward? That's number two. That's number three. I feel the anointing there. Declare the mighty word of God over your situation. What are you going through? Speak the solution. Declare solution in the name of Jesus and it should come to pass in Jesus' name. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Yeah. Somebody say yes. Yeah. Somebody speak the word of God. Somebody declare the word of God in the name of Jesus. You know what the Bible says? Ephesians 6, 17. You see, and take the element of salvation. Oh my God. I'm thinking and I'm praying the next class will be the, the, the armor of God.
God don't talk to my wife, he's talking about me, the armor of God. That's what he's talking about. He said, and get and what? 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 The ailment of and what? Do you know there's a sword in this place? The sword of the what? Uh -huh. Which is what? And the sword of the spirit. Which is what? Listen to me. In the armor of Jesus, that's what we're talking about now. You understand that? The only weapon, the only armor of God that for defense and what? The devil needs to be careful. When you are possessed and you are loaded with the word of God, it will attack you from distance, but not from close. Because if you come close to me, I'm serious. It's the only element. It's no, the word of God is the only armor for defense and offense. Every other armor is for defense. The shield, the, the element, the bell is for defense to put everything together. But the word of God, somebody said the word of God. Oh, come on, somebody said the word of God. Come on, somebody said the word of God. Come on, somebody said the word of God. Come on, said the word of God. It's the only. That's why the devil don't like you if you have the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, he will attack you. It will toss you to and fro. To and fro. But when you have the world, the belt will put your shirt together. The belt won't allow the devil for your church to go to and fro. Because the belt put everything together. Sean, come. Be up. Stop that. Try to attack me. Defense. Too close. Ah, the sword of the spirit. That's why you should learn the word of God. When you know the word of God, the enemy will be afraid of you. Satan will be afraid of you. He might be sending arrow, but he can't move close to you. Oh God. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? you know what you just said? When he said when Satan attacked you, he said, man. Come on, speak it, church. Man, but not live by what? By bread alone. But you shall live by what? By the word that proceed out of the mouth of God. If that will send arrow, I send arrow. If you attack, I will block. You come too close, I'm going to knock him down with the word of God. Come on, somebody say the word of God. The sword of the spirit. <clears throat> block. 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 I'm watching him. You move closer. <laughs> Got it. Got it. And that's what Jesus did. He tempted Jesus. Jesus defend. An offense. He said, man, you have not lived by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He told Jesus to jump from the mouth. You saw that mouth and went to Israel. Very hard. The Bible says he took him there. No reason. Man, go there. And he tells him to what? To jump. I will give you everything. You know what God, Jesus told him? Thou shall not tempt. The Lord your God. Thou shall not tempt the Lord your God. In other words, I am your creator. I am the creator. You are creation. I created you. How dare you want to tempt me? I have all power. I have all authority. I created you. You cannot tempt me. I am your God. Oh God of heaven. The word of God is powerful. Yes. Yes. Thou 
shall not tempt the Lord your God. You know what Jesus was saying? God is the only being that has no beginning. God has no beginning and has no end. Lucifer has a beginning. He has the beginning. He was created. He's a creation. Not no creator. Jesus said, I am the creator. You cannot tempt me. He rebuked him by the word of God. Come on, somebody. We got to declare the mighty word of God over our situation. Oh God. Will I finish today? Number four. Believe in God supernatural power to do the impossible. Believe in God's supernatural power to do the impossible. Do you believe it? Because if you don't believe it, you will not experience it. You have to believe it that your God is able to do miracle supernaturally in regards to your situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it. Luke 10, 37. And why? Let, let me just say this. There are some situations in our life that needed divine intervention. Have you ever been in that situation before? That nobody can help you. Your friend cannot help you. Your parents cannot help you. Even your pastor cannot help you. Your husband cannot help you. And your wife cannot help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's some situation that no one can help you. It's only God. And that's why we pray divine intervention. When you believe for God to intervene in your situation, it will change everything around. There's some situation, even there's some sicknesses that the enemy, the, the doctor already said, no, you're hospice patient. You got to go home and go. Yes. But God is able to intervene. I'll tell you a new story quick. At the beginning of the ministry, there was a lady that came, Pastor Marshall will remember. We were at the house in Bowie. We have a, a ram, we had a rambler there those days, you know, uh, property that we rent out. So we, we started the church there, and then this lady, I believe she had a stage four cancer, stage four cancer. She came to church. I didn't even know. She didn't know. She came to the room. But worship was powerful that day. The glory of the Lord came down. And the Lord told me, go and lay your hand on her. I didn't even pray. I don't know what she's going through. I lay my hands. I didn't even rest it all the way. She slain in the spirit. At the beginning of the service. What she was still going on? What she was still going on? That's why sometimes in worship, everybody got to worship. When everybody begins to worship, unison, we sing it together, and everybody cry to God. You know what happened? That moved God to leave heaven and come on earth. This is what I mean. The glory of the Lord will come down. When the glory comes down, sickness is illegal. Disease is illegal. I'm telling you, I didn't even pray because I didn't know what she was going through. But Lord said, lay hand. She's slain at the beginning of worship. To the end of the service, she was still there. So we waited, you know, we want to respect the Holy Spirit to see what the Holy Spirit was doing. Everybody left. Then we remember that. Everybody left. Remember us? We waited, we waited, we waited. I said, man, I got to wake her up. 
Watch this. So I did it. I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, I ask you in the name of Jesus to release this woman. You know, I didn't want to complain. I wanted to say she'd been there all day. <laughs> no, God is my witness. My witness. She's then, guess what happened? When she got up, she said, She had a wig on. Under the wig, she had cancer and her head was bald. While she was on the ground, Jehovah is my witness. You're talking about divine intervention? Her hair grew. Grew a few inches. We're doing it. She went to the restroom to check. So we didn't know. We said, what's wrong with that? We're going to do deliverance again? <laughs> I'm ready to go home. You know, I'm taking after a long service. She did it. She did it. She did it. And she went and looked into the mirror. Her hair grew. Then she came and told her, oh, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. She, so she said, I'm going through. I said, no, it's over. Amen. She come the following Sunday. Her hair was long like this. Whoa. Divine wow. intervention. There's some situation that man cannot fix. Doctors cannot fix. But God is able to intervene and to heal. But you don't tell him to bring the glory down. Let God come back. Can we say amen to that? Now, believe in that. Or that let's go to Luke 137. For nothing will be impossible with God. Let's go to number five quick. When I see this all the times, many people, when we are going to hardship and going to difficulties, we always disconnect from our own church. It's wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I correct you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most people, when everything is good, they will come. But when things get difficult, they disconnect from church family. When times are hard, but the church family are there to help you and support you and stand with you while you are going through. To support with spiritual prayer, emotional support, and activate your faith. Because when we are going through, we tend to lose our faith in God. But when we come to church and connect with God's people, some of them probably have testimony that will elevate your faith. He activates or he reactivates your faith. He encourages you. It's not to disconnect, but to stay connected to your church family. They can support you emotionally and pray. We can pray for you. A sister can touch you and give you hope and encourage you. I hear them saying those things elevate or reactivate our faith. So we need to stay connected and continue to serve God. Amen. God might be testing your faith. Let's do this quick. I love number six. Our scriptures, Exodus 23, 25, is talk about serving God, continue to serve God. Amen. Amen. Number six, I love it. Don't stop praying and believing in the power of prayer. Amen. 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 Also, it's the same. Some people, when they're going through, they stop praying. Your prayer life diminishes. Actually, it's supposed to increase. Don't stop praying and believe in the power of prayer. Can I go a little further? What you should do, if you've been praying about something and it hasn't happened yet, take it to another level. And pray a prayer of agreement. Prayer of a what? Agreement. Maybe you've been praying by yourself for months, for months, and nothing happened. Go a sister or to a brother that loves you. 
and have your heart and touch and agree with them. Tell them what you trust in God for. Because I've done this a few times. I will call apostle friends of mine. Come on, touch and agree with me for this. I'm trusting God for this. Not that I don't have the anointing, but double anointing is more powerful than single anointing. The Bible says one will chase a thousand, but two will put the one. That's it. Go. Don't allow pride to stop you. Nothing wrong with you. You have the anointing. You just need a prayer of, a war, of agreement. You know why it's so powerful? Jesus said, when two or three touch and agree concerning anything. You know what he said? I am in the midst. Jesus factor. I mean, that's what we call it the other day. Jesus what? Factor. Jesus said, I am in. You are not alone. I will do it for you. Amen? So number six. Don't stop praying. I'm believing in the power of prayer. There's power in prayer. And that's thing I will teach. One is prayer of agreement. And sometimes it could be one you are trusting God for require the law of accumulation. There is a law of what? Accumulation sometimes is needed for a big breakthrough. Especially a breakthrough that will benefit the kingdom of God. The law of what? What is accumulation? It means this cup It's not your fool. And the law of accumulation said there will be no breakthrough until it's full. It's a law. In other words, if it's not full, the blessing that is attached to it will not happen. And the law of accumulation said when the substance or the capacity of this cup is to be full and the substance is more than the capacity of the cup. Are you with me? The capacity of this cup, let's say uh, one meter, is not there yet. The Lord said, if it doesn't fool, it will not overflow. So in prayer, this is my prayer. The water is my prayer. I've been praying. I've been praying. I've been praying. But it's here. But there's no breakthrough. Thank you, sir. No what? Not enough. The Lord said, it has to be Ooh. Hello, you cannot change the law. God is the only one that can change his own law. That's what we call miracle. He can amend his own law. He can amend it. He can change it. Amen. That's miracle. The children of Israel went to the Red Sea. He parted. That was the law of nature. You cannot part it an ocean. But God parted it. He suspended nature. So he can bring forth his miracle. They work on a dry land. That's miracle. So but the law of accumulation means this thing has to be full. That's why you cannot stop praying. Oh, come on. Your breakthrough my associate with the law of accumulation is almost full. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. When you keep on praying, get me a bottle of water. When you keep on praying, 
And you keep on praying. That's what happened. Come on, talk to me. You go on. You do what? So there's no breakthrough yet. So don't stop. It's not over yet. It's the law of accumulation. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Yeah? Continue to pray. Don't give up. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Prayers going up. Continue to pray. He's almost there. See what's happening. It's the law of accumulation. Blessing is coming out. God is blessing him. That's the law of accumulation. Don't stop praying until he overflow. Don't stop praying until oh God of heaven. Oh God of heaven. The law of what? Accumulation. You don't stop. You've been praying all these years. You're almost there. Keep on praying. Keep on trusting God. Prayer works. I said prayer works. Prayer is effective. Now, let me tell you another thing. Prayer also means listen to this. Pressure in the spirit breaks matter. Pressure. Say pressure. In the spirit breaks matter. There's some matters are very tough. There's some issue in life are very difficult. It doesn't happen. I don't have a plywood. Let me, you come and just take the mic. This thing is very hard. Only both hands. If I want to break this, this thing is in my way of my breakthrough. It's very hard. Amen? So, I have to put pressure on what? If I do this, one time, is it going to break? Why? No, you know what? Constant pressure breaks matter. There's a matter are very strong. You have to keep up praying. Fire prayer. Not our Father, I'll be thy name, that kingdom come, then we'll be done. <laughs> Ain't going to work. If you got the devil too, knowing this ain't the same thing. Lord, Father, hallelujah. You're going to do it. No pressure. In the name of Jesus, I pray to you in the name of Jesus. Every matter, every problem in my life, I command you to go. 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 I will do that in the morning. I will do that in the afternoon. I will do that at night. Constant pressure. Comes out what? Breaks what? Yes ago, yes ago, I prayed for something. Somebody delivered. The demon is so strong. He said, no, I'm not going. I said, I know. I know what to do. I begin to, 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 to pray. I begin to pray. I begin to go. I begin to go. I begin to pray. I begin to go. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Stop now. Stop that. No, I'm not stopping. I continue to pray. I continue to pray. See, prayer is fire. Yeah. I begin to pray. I begin to pray. I begin to pray. You get the point? The demon said, okay, now I will go. You're still talking. It's supposed to be going. Pressure in the spirit breaks matter. There's some situations, stubborn situations in our lives that the enemy has planted in our life not to see greatness. Those matters are stubborn. You have to be more stubborn than the matter. For me, I'm my wife, we make up, man, I ain't giving up. It doesn't matter what attack the enemy says. Actually, he's building me up Amen. to pray more, Amen. to put more pressure, to pray more, to fast more. Oh God, I'm going to stop. Where are we, number six? Mark 11, 24. I like to give scripture. Is that okay? It's good to see that. In Mark 11, 26. He said, therefore I said to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive, and then you shall have them. Let's go to number seven. And I will finish. Stand 
on the faith God has given you. Time up. Oh, I didn't do too bad. My time just up. I was rushing. Stand on the faith. Stand on the faith. God has given you. Can we display Hebrews 11.32? Hebrews 11.32? Do you know when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we got saved, God gave us a portion of his own faith. Every believer. There is left to us to develop it. Thank you for that. <laughs> and what more shall I say? For this time we will fail. For me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah. Also of David and Samuel and the prophet. Continue. Title three. Okay, I'm reading from here. Title three. Next. Who? Listen to this. Who? To faith. Subdue. Kingdoms. What righteousness. Obtain promises. Stop the mouth of lion. <laughs> Oh God, oh God, true faith, true what? Faith, true faith, subdue the kingdom. Amen. Oh God, kingdoms, thank you. They subdue to what? To faith, subdue kingdoms, work righteousness, obtain what? Promises. Okay, let's stop. There are two kingdoms. There's a kingdom of God. And there's a kingdom of Satan. In order to overcome this kingdom of Satan, our faith must be strong in God. Because the kingdom of Satan, what they're trying to do to stop the will of God to be done in our lives. Sometimes saints don't understand that. In the kingdom, everybody in the kingdom of God there's a greatness ahead of you. There's a greatness in your destiny. But if you don't know the warfare, how to fight the good warfare, you cannot obtain it. You can only obtain it with the faith in God and subdue. The word subdue me to take dominion. The word subdue me to subjugate. To subjugate. Trample over them with your authority and with your faith. Without faith, they will not stop the kingdom. Without faith, they will not receive the promise. Without faith, they will not stop the mouth of the lion. Faith. Trust God and exercise your faith. And I will stop here. My time is up. Can we start on our faith? We have communion. We have communion. Yeah, we didn't do communion earlier. We ran out of communion. The one that we ordered did not come. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to do communion. Remember, number one, trust God at all times. Regardless of what you're going through right now, let us trust God. Number two, let us focus on God's greatness instead of our ability. In order to focus on God's greatness, you have to have good relationship with God. Because if not, you wouldn't know His greatness. Amen. Number three. Declare the mighty word of God. Declare the mighty word of God over your situation. Number four. Believe God for supernatural power to do impossible. 
Amen. Stay connected. Number five, stay connected to your church family. If you are going to, let us know. Don't hold it on to yourself. The enemy likes isolation. He likes to isolate you from where you can be blessed for those that can help you. It's not time to stay away. It's time to remain connected. Amen. And we can pray for you. We can help you. Amen. Stay connected. Glory to God. Amen. Don't stop praying. And believe in the power of prayer. Or maybe I should change that. Don't stop praying until you see manifestation. Don't stop. Keep on praying. Just have in your mind is the law of accumulation. I'm almost there. If we stop, process, stop. Right? It can increase. It stop. Notice. Anytime, oh, I have to give you this. Anytime you stop to persevere, the law of process stop. Note that, please. Anytime you stop to persevere, to stop pushing, to continue to pray, to continue to do what you're supposed to do, the law of process stop. It's the same with love accumulation. If you don't accumulate there, you stop. That process stop. The blessing that is associated to that love, you will not receive it. Actually, there's a scripture. Oh, God. I don't know. Ecclesiastics. Is that 311? Somebody open for me quick. Is that it? See, Ecclesiastic. On your forehead. No, no, no. Is it 11? Let's talk about the cloud. I will get that scripture for you. I don't have it in my notes. You have that? Hey, please ask it to the level. No, what have that? Can you put that? What? No, that's not it. Ecclesiastics. Hey, it's talk about the cloud. It's talk about the cloud. I will get that for you. It's talk about the cloud. In order for the rain to rain, the cloud has to be full. It's in Ecclesiastic. I will get that for you another time. You know, to overflow. You know, so we have to continue to pray and understand the law. You got it? Ecclesiastic what? That's not it. I will get that for you. You talk about the cloud. The cloud has to be full. That's the law of accumulation. There's a scripture behind that. I will get it for you. No, 11 3. Oh, I'm switching. I always do that. I always do that. Pastor Masha told me one day, I always switch things. See, they call it something. This one? What's that? <laughs> dyslexic. I always do that. She tell me you are dyslexic. No, I am not dyslexic. I am athletic. <laughs> dyslexic. Yeah, on the ass. I only switched it. Then you told me, oh, you have this. I'm not that. I reject that in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Thank you. I switch it. Ecclesiastic 11.3. You know what I'm saying? If the cloud are full of rain, then empty themselves upon the earth. What happens if the cloud is not full? They get empty. There's no overflow. That's the law of accumulation. If the cloud are what? Full of rain. So the cloud has to be what? Full of rain. They have to be the law of accumulation in heaven. Before rain. Come down. They empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there is a die. It's a law. Do you know? I need to stop. When that rain come down, in the same rain that came down, evaporation, evaporation. It go back what? It go back up. 
That's what we call what? Hydrological. Say that. Hydro. Cycle. So the rain has to come first. Then there will be what? Evaporation. That's the transport that God used to take the water back to heaven. Because the heaven has to be full. Oh, I'm going so ready to hear me. When praises. What happens when praise don't go up? Oh, I wish I had more time. It got to go up. When God bless you. Now, before praise, go on. Oh, let me start. If God has done something for you and you haven't praised him, stop asking for the next blessing. If the Lord has done something for you, Actually, all of us need to praise God this morning, this afternoon. You are alive. You woke up this morning. You have your two legs. <laughs> you can talk. You can walk. You better give him praise. You better give him praise. You better give him praise. You are alive. You are alive. You are talking. You are speaking. You are shouting. Oh my God. Oh my God, Father, I thank you that I am alive today. Oh my God. You know what just happened? Evaporation just occurred. Praises. I promise you, something's coming back. What is this? Oh God, I don't have time. Because the law of accumulation said is the Full of rain. If your praise has gone up to heaven, guess what? Blessings will come back. The law of accumulation. Come on, let's bless God. 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 We are alive today. We are alive today. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you.
us in the name of Jesus. Let that place go us down. Blessing will come down. Amen. And you are not praising him in the honor of God. You are just praising him in the position he gives you. He is a great God. He is an awesome God. We are here today because of him. If Satan has to pray, none of us will be here. But we are here to bear witness of our God. Sometimes I have to hear them praying the Holy Ghost. My day, 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 go, go, that day. I just thank God I am alive. <laughs> There's a lot of warfare that happened at midnight. <laughs> Those that are flying could not come near my tent. <laughs> Hallelujah. For our God is good. He's a God that's with you and for you. Huh? Do we have the bread? In John 6 58. Please listen to this. John 6 58. He said, this is the bread which came down from heaven. Just listen to me. Listen to me for a few minutes. Jesus said, this is the bread that came down from what? Not as your fathers ate the manna and they are dead. And they are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Will live forever. Those that ate manna did not live forever. They perished. He that eat this bread, this bread symbolizes the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I give you a revelation? I'm sorry, sometimes I'm not sorry. I give you this. This will change your life. How you see the bread and the cup. That's why we do it every Sunday. As often as you do this. You do this in remembrance. There are promises. I will teach one day. Ten promises of the bread and the cup. I'm telling you, you'll be checking in every day. When you have the understanding and revelation of this. The bread symbolizes what? The body. The same as what? The body of who? What do we hear what the scripture says? That's why I always tell you, I'm not supposed to come down. So stay there. That's why I always tell you, Jesus did not need, did not use the blood of Joseph or the blood of Mary. His body was already formed in heaven. In the spirit realm, the form of Jesus, the body of Jesus was already formed. That's what he said. He said, this bread which I came down from where? His body came from heaven. God just placed it in what? In Mary's womb. Holy Ghost came and came upon her. And put it there. He can never use the blood of Mary. Because that was Adamic blood. And the sin in Adamic blood is contaminated. That's what. He came down. He said, My body came down from heaven. Oh, and honest, baby. For a few weeks, I need to show you some revelation of the body, of the bread, and of the cup. He came down. He was already formed. So Jesus' DNA is different from Mary' DNA. It's different. It cannot be. Mary is a dabby blood. That's what Jesus saying. My body came from heaven. In other words, saying I am God. My human body was formed in. But my body will fall on heaven. Earth. 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 And it went. And the promise is, if you take it, that means you are in union with Jesus. Jesus lived forever. You will live forever. 
Before we partake, is anyone here who said today, I want to give my life to Jesus? Oh, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to come into union with him. So me too might live forever. Anyone. I will pray for you quick. Anyone. You dedicate your life. Oh, I see a brother there. Lift up your hand. Can we clap our hands? I know you have communion. Just shout. Just shout for him. Just shout for him. Shout. Shout. Can you come forward, please? Can you come forward? Come, can we rejoice, church? Can we rejoice? Can we rejoice? Can we rejoice? Huh? Stand with him. Pastor Red, you're going to stand with him. Let me give him a hug. Can we welcome him? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, another special coming. Can we bless God? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Stand with him. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Anybody else? That say, I want to give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life to Jesus. But this time, I want to be serious. I want to connect to him because I want to live forever before we partake. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Nobody, nobody else. Praise God. Can we, before I pray for them, can we clap our hands and bless God? Thank you for coming. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, man. I will pray for them, but let's get their information. Pray this prayer after me. After me. Say, dear Jesus. Say, dear everybody, let's pray with them. So let's stand with them. Amen. Say, dear Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God and you died for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all righteousness. Lord Jesus, give me your spirit. And your power. Lord Jesus. I declare with my mouth. That you are my Lord. And my Savior. Instruct me. I will obey. Lead me. I will follow. And in your name. I pray. Come on can we shout hallelujah. Pastor Reggie. Amen. Pastor Reggie. Is one of our pastors here. We will get your information. And we will be in touch with you. Uh, there's a teaching I will send. What is next? After salvation, what is next? We have that message. Pastor Reggie will share that with you. What's next after this? Amen. Come on, can we bless God for that? Amen. Let's, now let's take the bread. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We bless you and we exalt your name. Thank you for your body that came down from heaven. We thank you for your obedience unto death. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Let us partake. Let's break it. There's a reason we break it. And so other people break it. Some people don't break it. You don't have to. But there's a reason. It's symbolic. Because his body was broken. Yes. Pastor Reggie told us. Because it was. His body was. Broken. How? He took. 39 strands. How many? On his back. For our what? In Hebrew, in Hebrew, the meaning means a blow that cuts. Every time they boom, there was a cut and it bled. Normally, it's supposed to be 40. The law Says how many? Forty. Because thieves, when they do something wrong, it's in the word of God. The Quran that give us forty lakhs in pounds. Yes. All the way to forty. But when they get to thirty-nine, they couldn't go to forty. Because very good. I will answer it. Why is that? I truly believe there's only major 39 sicknesses in the world. So it was not necessary for the 40. I believe so. I 
can research it. I won't research it here because they, 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 what we call deep study. They were 39, I believe they were 39 students. That's what we call it. And Jesus did what? He paid the price. Why did he pay the price for four children? Because that's his name. Make sure you understand that. I believe this. I believe now. And I'll look it up for you on there and you do a deep study, Hebrew. That's the way I do it. I'll get it to you. That's what I mean. Sickness. What am I saying? Whatever sickness is or disease you have, claim your healing. Let's take the cup. John 6, 57. Don't worry, next week will be that long. John 6, 27, 57. As the living father sent me, and I live because of my father, so he who feeds on me will live because I live. Blood transfusion. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse the Adamic blood in us. Let there be blood transfusion in the name of Jesus. He said, He will feed on Him. Life is not in the body, life is in the blood. It's in the blood. As we feed on it, cleanse our Adamic blood. Let there be blood transfusion in the name of Jesus. Let there be impartation so we might live forever. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name that we partake. And Bible says, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. We feed on him so we might have life. We're going to take our tithe and offering and conclude Ways to give on the screen. Let us give. Ways to give. There, let's connect with this. May we need more men in the church. We call on to them. Amen. Let's get our tithe and offering ready. Second Corinthians. I give you Second Corinthians what? Nine eight. Last week, Friday, I gave you what? Job 36, 11. Let's get our tithe and offering ready. While we are doing that, if you can dis- display 2 Corinthians, I want to declare, amen. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, who has it? Job 36, 11. I want to declare that over you as you obey God and pay your time, give your offering to support the work of God on earth. Amen. If you need envelopes, our usher will give you one. Lift up your hand. You can be on the speaker. Seven, you have it. Second Corinthians 9. It. Sean, you go to second um, Job thirty six eleven. I'm going to declare. You have it. Which one? Job. If you can stand, get, use your mic. While you are preparing your tithe and offering, I want to declare this over you. We declare the mighty word of God over you. Amen. Mm-hmm. Job thirty six eleven. If they obey and serve him. If they do what? If they obey. Obey and, and serve. serve. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Amen. 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 Come on, how many receive that? Come on, let me hear you say amen if you receive that. But there are conditions. 
What are the conditions? Okay. If they obey and serve him. As you obey and serve God. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will spend the days of your years in prosperity. I declare prosperity over you in the name of Jesus. Not only financial prosperity, but all around prosperity. In every area of your life, you will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If they obey and serve God, you shall spend your days in prosperity. There will be no lack. It will be prosperity in the name of Jesus. So prosperity. Financial prosperity. All around prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ. But I also like the last one. And their years. In pleasure. In pleasure. God will not give you prosperity. You cannot enjoy. Pleasure means enjoyment. Pleasure means gladness. Amen. I always pray, God, any money I cannot handle, prosperity I cannot handle, don't give it to me. Give me what I can handle. You will enjoy your prosperity in Jesus' name. The second scripture, you have it? You have your scripture. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Amen. Come on. Also receive that prayer in Jesus' name. All grace to abound towards you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you for the resources that you're giving to your people as they are coming to give back for the work of the ministry, for the furtherance of the work of the ministry. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bless them. Bless them exceedingly. Bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Father, let all grace abound towards them that they will have in all sufficiency in all things, having abundance in every good work in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as they are giving and obeying you and continue to serve you, that they will spend their days in prosperity, all around prosperity, in the name of Jesus Christ, and they will enjoy what you have given to them. Father, we thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's bring, follow the direction of the usher from the back. You can bring your offering. Bring your offering. All praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. All praises, All praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 He is wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 He is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 he is wonderful. All praise be to the King of kings and the Lord our God, he is wonderful. All praise be to the King of kings and the Lord our God, he is wonderful. He is wonderful.
Let us stand as we dismiss. We will be back on Friday. This Sunday, we have special guests. She'll be in town. Prophet Kelly Cruz, powerful woman of God, will be here to bless us. Also, remember to give your $37 for Ocean City for the boss. Amen. And also, if you are going to baptize, you see Pastor Reggie. You got the list. There's a list outside. And Write it down, then you'll be teaching. Right? Uh, baptism. Amen. So we are, we are teaching ministry. Not only prophetic and deliverance, we are teaching ministry. We're going to teach people. Amen. Amen. Also, immediately after the service, I would like to see the leadership team very quick. Please, uh, in the conference room. Amen. Come on, church. Are you blessed today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Also, to tell you to pray for my wife and I, uh, this Saturday is our 33rd anniversary. 33. 33 years. 33 years. Come on, just give glory to God. Give glory to God. Thirty-three years. Thirty-three years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will tell you one thing. It takes God to bring two tough people together. You know, they used to do this pastor night every month. We were off. Because we are two tough people. God has to break me, shake me, knock me down, lift me back up and put me down. And, uh, and that's why I want to do this teaching uh, uh, seminar, married and free seminar. I have learned so much over the years. And, and I see that a lot of younger people staying away from commitment. <laughs> a, a lot of younger people staying away from commitment. Do you know why? Because of bad experiences of others. They hear that it don't work. It works. Even I wish that all that I know now, I knew it before we get married. Oh, God. Oh, God. And that's what we are teaching. Remember how many was there the first teaching? That's the basic of marriage. You are not getting married for yourself. You are getting married to be somebody's need. Remember we talk about that? Needs. We are not needy people, but we got needs. Physical need, spiritual need, emotional need. Amen. So how do you marry to somebody you don't know their need? When I, I don't want to preach. You got to sign up for this. I'm telling you. Why do you do that? You don't get married for someone you don't know their need. You are not there to meet your need. You are there to meet your spouse's need. You love somebody. He's someone that you love. If there's no love, don't even touch it. Let us go. I have meeting. I mean, I can go. I've learned. Not only that, I studied this also in school. And I have the experience. Oh my God, experience better. Are you hear what I'm saying? Amen. It's need to meet somebody else's need. You love somebody so much, you want to meet them. Yeah? What the Bible says, love does not seek peace. Most marriages is not like that. People are going in for what they can get out. They are going in for their own. Anytime you see there, it will not work. If I do premarital counseling, a lot of people, I won't marry them. 
call it me, 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 me. I must die. But we are in a generation of iPhone, iPad, <laughs> everything. I, I, I. You want to get married? I must die. It's we. It's us. I. Everything. iPad, iPhone, iCloud. <laughs> Man, the devil is a liar. But <laughs> Amen. And for ladies, one of the things that my husband has never said, heard me say in 30 something years is, I told you so. <laughs> I have never told him that. Do you know why? Because women are very sensitive. I think God just made us that way. But who am I to bring him down to say, well, I told you that if you dro drove that car down the lane, it was going to spin. I told you so. No, that you're bringing him down. You got to lift him up. Amen. Honey, you made a mistake, but it's okay. You bumped that, going down that curve, but it's okay. Next time, you know. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Also, for the men, can I talk to the men for a few minutes? Oh, God, we have to have these classes. Women like to be treated as something special. Precious. Preciousness. Preciousness. You are special, but men have to treat them like that. Like that. One thing is to know that somebody is precious, but by your action, they can tell if you are treating them Precious. Preciousness. How he treats me. One of the things that my husband does that I absolutely love, wherever he goes in, in all over the world, he brings a bring back perfume for me. I, I absolutely I'm a perfume hog. I was telling somebody that I have about 50 bottles of perfume. And I, hold on, no, no. Okay, I need to say this. But the last, the one that blessed me so much, he, 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 all over the world. But the last time he was so excited, he didn't wait till he get home. He's like, I just said it was the best uh, 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 perfume at the perfumery in Paris, and I got the best. And he said, honey, it's very expensive, very expensive. <laughs> but I got it. And he said, but I, I said, you know, when you get to go home, no, I want to give it to you now. I want to give it to you now. And he filled the box as nicely wrapped with a bow as special. Preciousness as precious. Actually, it's true. Anytime I used to travel a lot, I would stop in Paris. They have the best perfume in the world. They know me there. I'm stop there, duty free. I would buy the expensive. Bush. And <laughs> One time I was in Germany. I enter a store. Man, they have this shoe and a handbag that matches it. I'm talking about 15 years ago. She said, Have it. It's so nice. I said, What? And I checked money. Money was tight. Well, I have to take good care of her. I purchased it. She still have it up to today. Oh, she still she knows. You wear. That's preciousness. They, they want to be treated well. You know they are precious. Treat them well. Amen. Okay, I will give the women one more. Men want to be respect. Only a few I clap. Respect. Respect. Most men don't want the flowers and the stuff. Just respect him. We will continue in Jesus' name. Amen? Oh. We had a couple. We had a couple and see. And the wife said, you don't do this for me. See, pastor, he opened the door for his wife. You don't open my door. You don't, you don't drop me off before and then go park. What's wrong with you? I was like, yeah. 
Actually, one of my friends, basketball friend, got in trouble for that. When we go somewhere, I don't, with my wife, I will park in front, drop her off, open the door, and she will go. So we went to this wedding in Tennessee. So my friend drove the car, parked in front, came out, the car. she came out, and Pastor Masha, she got the walk. She walked out. Everybody was looking. Everybody was watching. So I went and parked in front. Then I came back. Trouble started. One of, she was telling me, one of my friends said, his wife, said, do you see? You don't treat me like that. You will go back in two miles and we walk together. He got in big trouble. Amen. We got to learn how to treat women. Amen. Also, how to treat men. Amen. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus. Just pray for us. It's on Saturday. We need your prayers. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let you guide your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen.